I'm just a nobody Trying to tell everybody About somebody Who can save anybody Deception, part one and maybe part two. Deception in, in the body of Christ. And Sister Denise was praying early, earlier. If the church needs anything, it needs, it needs not to be deceived today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Is it all? This will be the first Sunday that we will be taping for YouTube. Last Sunday, our brother was not here. He was taking care of his business. But bless him anyway. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for the couple that sent the church. Brother Roy and Sister Candy, they sent the church the money to buy, to buy the camera equipment. Amen. To buy the, the CD burner. Amen. This is man, he worked for Brother Larry. And he, he and his wife, they believe in this ministry. Come on. Yeah, yeah. And we give them all the praise and all the glory. I remember when you did that. You called the house and you said, Pastor Ron, I know you don't want to do it. And I said, I don't. But to be honest with you, I don't want to hear myself. Matter of fact, once those things are taped, I don't listen to those things. I don't. You know, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to hear myself. And you guys come in and listen. It must be the Lord. Come on. Amen. Amen. And so when I was sitting there in the study, I said, Lord, I don't want to do this. And I heard that small voice of the Holy Spirit that said, it's not about you. It's about my son. Amen. Glory to God. I remember around here, that's what we always, we always point to people with Jesus Christ. Not the pastor on a faith life church, but Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because I'm just a man. I'll fail you, but Jesus will never fail. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, let's have your Bible. Can someone shut the door so we don't air condition all the air Second uh, Peter, chapter 2, starting in the first verse. But there were false prophets, prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable Pharisees, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with vain words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingers not, and their damnation slumbers not. I'd like to use our subject this morning, deception. Can we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we give you praise and glory in your house. We thank you, Lord, for, your, for you this morning and all that you've done for, for us. We thank you for sending your son to die on Calvary's, at Calvary's cross that we might be saved. We thank you, Lord, that we're that last day church, I believe, before the, before the rapture. Amen. We could have been born any other time, Lord, but it was for such a time as this. And I'm asking, oh God, that you would help us, Lord, that the anointed one, which is not pastor, but Jesus Christ, would come this morning. And touch these frail, pitiful lips, God. And let me say what you would have me to say. And what you don't want me to say, Lord, may I not say it. Lord, we're here to lift you up. Yes. That you might be glorified. Yes. And that none of us would be deceived by those things that are going on in the body of Christ today. And we would ask it all in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. David Wilkinson, a brother who's now gone on with the Lord. He said this, and I quote, Right now in America, there's a, a raging storm of confusion in the church. So many people are confused. There's little discernment, and yet there's much false doctrine, foolishness, and flesh. Our ministry received calls and letters from people all over the country who say, what's going on? I can't figure it out. Our pastor's bringing in strange teachings and is tearing, tearing our church in two. Is this of God or not? Please tell us. We don't know what to believe anymore. My son Gary, who pastors a church in Denver, Colorado, called me recently. He said, Dad, I went to a meeting recently where things just went crazy. It almost frightened the leaders. 
They had to get up and say, all right, let's bring this all back to Jesus. Let's bring this all back to Jesus. Amen. At the beginning, they said it was a move of the Holy Ghost. But then they had to say, let's bring it all back to Jesus. Where, where had they been if they had to bring everything back to Jesus? Beloved, this kind of thing is frightening. The focus in that meeting should have never been anywhere but on Jesus. Often people come to me and say, Brother Wilkerson, you've got to go with us. A great revival has broken out in such and such a church. It's marvelous. People falling down left and right. He said, now I'm not against manifestation. I worked for five years with Kathleen Kuhlman. And I saw people in her meetings fall under the power of the Holy Ghost in a way that was absolutely awesome. There was no manipulation involved. It was a genuine work of the Spirit. And that's why here we encourage, don't stand behind anybody. If they fall and hit the floor and it's of God, they'll be okay. Amen. Amen. We don't have any professional catchers around here. Amen. Because that encourages the flesh. Right. There was a brother by the name of Armando Chavez that comes and preaches in November here. He, he laid hands on a young lady. She hit that chair and fell like a feather. Amen. Amen. I was in Florida preaching at Brother Leon's brother, Lord, and sister church. Laying hand on the young, young man, and he fell under the power of God. And I kept right on moving. Right. It's not about Pastor Ron. Right. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And sad to say, the church has made a spectacle out of the power of God. And that's why most people want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. I thank the Lord that this sister has been obedient to the things of God. How many know we've been praying, God raised up somebody? Amen. 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 They were speaking tongues and interpret. Yeah. Now, how many know God brought that? The church, that is for the church today. Yeah. The, genuine, the genuine manifestation of the Holy Spirit, where Jesus Christ is lifted up and not the person. Right. Yeah. There was no manipulation involved. It was a genuine work of the Spirit. But if people want to tell me a great move of God is going on somewhere today, my first question will be, is God's word being preached there with consuming fire? Are people falling on the conviction of sin? Is the cry of the people there for the purging of the spirit of this world? Is holiness the result? Is there a strong message of reproof? Does it drive people to Jesus? Does everything, everything focus on him? Is Christ the sum of it all? Is there a new compassion for lost souls? A heart sinner repenting. That is the work of the Holy Ghost. He comes to reprove the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So if you're going to tell me the Holy Ghost has come down, then these things had better be happening. If not, judge it what it is. It is the flesh. Amen. How many know we need discernment today? Amen. There were false prophets who played Israel whole. And sad to say, they're false prophets today. One giving a prophecy doesn't make one a prophet. God has given us the offices of prophet, evangelist, teacher, and pastor. Did you know that? There are true prophets today. But personally, I have a problem with someone who tells me that they are a prophet. If they are a prophet, how many know eventually you'll know it? You don't have to go around advertising it. David Wilkinson was a prophet. But he never called himself a prophet. He called himself a watchman. Yes, amen. 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 I'm going to know it's not about your title. It's about the spirit of God. Amen. Before we came to this church, I was sitting under a ministry, and I love the man. But all he ever talked about was his degree. How many know when the, when the spirit of God, when the spirit of Satan comes against you, he didn't care less about your title. That's right. All he wants to know is, have you been with God? Amen. Have you heard from heaven? And there was times. I think back to, I think back to when my mother, she, we were born St. Paul A.M.E. You talk about no power. I was sprinkled at birth. I would sit there in service and hear the message, because God's word won't return void. And I would cry. But I wasn't born again. It was a great message, but there was no change in me. But my mother, years ago, had, I told you the story before, I'll be quick. She didn't have any money. 
And she went down to a, a tent. They called them holy rollers. They used to be on the other side of the tracks. But now they're uptown. Come on, somebody. Amen. They call them holy rollers. She said, I took you to that tent, and she anointed you with oil. And, and he laid hands on you. And then all of a sudden, that lady began to scream. And she said, what's wrong with my son? She said, nothing. He has the call of God upon his life. I think it came true. I remember years ago when I was walking into Venus. I was, a, I was, I was, I was of the singles group. There was a guy by the name of Rodney Nazarian. I used to love apple pie and ice cream. <laughs> it's nothing like some hot apple pie. Oh, yeah. Ooh, glory to God. And some cold ice cream. They call it apple pie. Apple pie. <laughs> Do you know the Bible says that God has given us good things to eat? Yes. 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 And we were walking into this. This building, I saw a car that reminded me of a young lady that I used to date. No, it wasn't her. Four black people got out, two men and two women. I told you this story before. And they walked up to me, and I, I opened the door for them because they were dressed to the nine, meaning sharp as a tack. If you were to touch one of them, Mr. Green, you might have cut yourself. They had a tie on and everything, the shoe would on the shine. Come on, somebody. They had just come from serving God. Mm, glory to God. I don't know what sometimes we need to give God our best that we can. Amen? We got a church now. Well, we don't have to, we don't have to, we can just go to church looking in any kind of way. Yeah, you can. Amen. Well, I, I guarantee you won't go to the White House looking any kind of way you can. And you're just a man. You put on your best, you'll shine your shoes and brush your teeth. Hey, guess what? We came to see someone greater than a president. We're oh, in the house of Almighty God. And so one of the guys, we were talking, I said, where did, where did you just come from? He said, we came from a Pentecostal meeting in a Seventh-day Adventist church. I said, what? He said, yes, we had to rent the hall. And then all of a sudden, he said, who's wrong? And when he said, who's wrong, I put my head down because I didn't want to hear it. I know he was talking to me. He said, who's wrong? I said, I'm wrong. And he grabbed his hand and I pulled back. I said, I didn't tell you my name. He said, I know I did. The Spirit of God told me who you were. And he said, ooh, come on, somebody. And he said, God is going to raise you up where, you, where you're going to speak the gospel and people are going to hear it all over the world. Oh. Yeah. All over the world. Because you do go all over the Does you two go all over the Of a faded word that came true. Amen? Yeah, amen? From a man who was in touch with God. And he didn't tell me he was prophet so-and-so. Oh, he just told me his name was Bob, Bill. Amen? amen? How many know it's not about what his name is, but it's who made his name be? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. If someone give you a word, a, 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 a prophetic word, write it down. If it doesn't come true, they are liars. Yeah. John Harkey preached. Brother John Harkey preached preached by here. I wasn't here. Sister Nisa, she remembered. And the church didn't look like this then. It was a little lighter than what it was now. Okay? Got a little color in there. Now, come on, somebody. Come on. And John Harkin stopped in the middle of a sermon. He said, God is going to bring a black man right beside you, Pastor Marty. Pastor Marty told me, he said, I, think, I thought he missed it. You know what John Harkin told me? No, he missed it. Because I know what God showed me. Yeah. I've been black now for 60 years. It ain't changing for nobody. When I go to heaven, I still be black. Come on, somebody. But I'm trying to tell you that when God said something, and it's of God, it will come true. Yeah. That's why we need prophetic today. That is true. That's why we need the gift of the Spirit moving in the church that Jesus Christ might be lifted up. Amen. Amen. And that even now, God's true servants should be opposed to those choosing to force, force their own being so upon the people instead of the truth that's declared by those that are really godly inspired. However, Apostle Peter is not talking about false prophets today. He's talking about false teachers in the scripture. You know what? False teachers sincerely believe in what they are teaching. Did you know that? And guess what? A biblical, illiterate church is deceived by it. Why? Because we don't spend time in prayer. Come on. We don't read our Bibles. And we're not faithful when it comes to church attendance. 
We spend more time listening to a lost news media or read godless newspapers than in the Word of God. Oh, we can tell you what the news say. But can you tell you what the Bible says? Fox News, CNN, HNLN, MSNBC, no, CNN is given by inspiration of God. It's not proper for a correction or for instruction in righteousness. But that Bible that you have on your table that has dust on it, how many know it is? Amen. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. You know what? Yesterday I went to a graduation. And this guy should have been a politician up there at Palo Verde College. Sister Josie, she invited us. She can't come here because she's studying. She's not here every Sunday because she's studying. But guess what she said? She said, Pastor, my tithe was stacking up. Come here. <laughs> Glory to God. No. Oh, woo, I love that Pastor Love to hear that. I was out of town. I called Sister Denise. Sister Denise, you didn't answer your phone. I needed the tithe. Come on, somebody. Amen. I called Sister Ginger. She stepped out of her office. That maybe had some tithe to give to the church. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. That's all right. I forgive you. I forgive you too. <laughs> but anyway, she came to the house and bought a tithe. Come on. Lord, Lord, give me 200, 300 more people like that. Come on, somebody. Pastor, I can't make it every Sunday, but I'll put my tithe aside. And right now, I've got so much time that I need to give it to the church. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Just because you're not in the house of God, that doesn't mean that you don't, you, you don't still pay your time. That's another message. But anyway, anyway. Amen. We went up to Valley College. And this guy, the keynote speaker, he stood up there at the podium and said, if it wasn't for Valley College, I would not be what I am today. It has made me what I am. I was the CEO of, of, of Golden Corral for 23 years. Man, when he said that, Brother Larry, it took the Holy Ghost to hold me back. Here you are talking about how much Valley College has done for you. Why have you done anything for blank? How many know we need a Golden Corral? Come on, somebody. Yeah. That's just like Roger Goodell standing in Los Angeles and saying, I appreciate what the city has done for me, and there's no football stadium. Yeah, right. wow. A politician talking about both sides of his neck. Right. Yes. I was out of street street. What's up, baby? We've been to Rosita's, and I still was angry. If you've been with going around for 40-something years, and you care about black, come on, somebody. Why don't we have a going around? <laughs> Your trust in man, put it in Jesus. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know some of you like saying it. it's true. Yeah, yeah, right. Amen. Praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. The Apostle Paul in Acts 20, 9 to 30 says, For well, I know this that after my departing, meaning after his death, <laughs> shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw disciples after them. How many know? That, is, that people are not supposed to be drawn after a preacher, right. mm -hmm. but after Jesus Christ. How many know that? Yeah. In my lifetime, I've seen this come to pass. I believe because of a ministry that Satan tried to destroy in the early 1980s. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe a lot of false doctrine has hit the church. And this man was responsible for his own sin. He said, it was my fault. But God had used that ministry to be a beachhead against all doc against doctrine that was false. And I'm not saying he was the only man that preached. He preached the, he preached the cross for salvation, but he didn't know how to preach the cross for deliverance. Come on, somebody. Yes. All for victory. That's why I beg with you. That's why I plead with you. Don't put any man on a pedestal. Because when we do, how many know you're setting that man up for failure? God says, I will share my glory with no man. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on. Yeah. I believe that when this individual failed in the, in the late 1980s, he stood against Christian rock. He stood against humanistic psychology, unconditionally eternal security that hell opened up its gates and it flooded this nation. And that's why when you turn on your television now, you see all type of foolishness. Come on. I don't care how full the church is. I don't care how popular the past is. If he's not preaching the blood of the Holy Spirit, of the cross of Christ, I was trying to listen to a guy yesterday. Because I don't want to be judgmental. Come on. 
And he was sitting up there using those big words. And I got so bored. Come on, somebody. And the place was packed. Not one time. If a man is not mentioning Jesus, how do you know you ain't listening to nothing? Come on, somebody. Because Jesus Christ is the only one that can lift you up. Jesus Christ is the only one that can set you free. We worry about false teachings such as Mormonism and Catholicism and Seventh-day Adventism and Islam. That isn't the illumined deception today. It's what's inside the church. Yes. Satan has the world. He's not worried about the world. He's worried about what's being preached from behind the pulpit. Yes, that is true. Oh, man. But thank God that God will raise up a man or woman who truly repents and raise them back up whether the church believes, lacks them or not. Amen. Who are you talking about, Pastor? You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Brother Jimmy Swagger. Yes. And some of you sitting here today still don't like it. Because he failed. So did David. Yes. So did Moses. Yes. So did Peter. Yes. Glory to God. But David said, I have sinned. And against thee only have I sinned. Yes. He didn't do like Saul. He didn't blame nobody else. He blamed them on himself. Yes. Now, there are consequences to sin. Yes. I said there are consequences. Yes. Amen? Oh yeah, there's a great boss. But if you truly repent, how do you know that God will raise you back up? Yeah. 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 The same man, I just opened up scripture with David Wilkerson. He went to the brother and called him out. He said, okay. And you know what happened? The ministry hit the dirt. But God left the door just a little wide, a little bit open. And I remember when I was, before I even, I was, I was riding in my car and I would listen to a cassette. You know what a cassette is, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would say, Lord, but I had, I, I had to get to support the ministry again. And the Lord, and, and I, I said, Lord, I mean, but he failed. And the Lord said, if you forgive me and not the trespasses, you will not forgive you. Right. So I listened to David Wilkinson. And David Wilkinson said, people are asking me, why am I talking to Jimmy Swain? He said, number one, he's a man of God. Number two, the gifts of God without repentance. And number three, I prophesy that God is going to open that ministry up again right now. Start wasting your time We're looking at those other things on television. Turn to, to SBN where you see the preaching of the cross 24 hours a day on direct TV. Dish, glory to God. Amen. Sky angel, man didn't do it. God did it, and you make you nothing about it. I'm not building up a man. I'm just telling you how God is. Yes. Yes. I remember I was telling my wife when I used to go to church, and, 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 and when I first saw this man, I, I said, man, who's this white dude playing this piano? I said, who's this white dude playing this piano? And because the piano just grabbed me. And I was in the world. Come on, somebody. Probably had just got through smoking a joint. Uh-huh. Oh, I know you guys have always been perfect all your life. <laughs> and then the next Sunday, I'm, here I am, joint and all, looking for that same telecast. And guess what? It grabbed me, brought me into salvation. Yes. It's been my Bible school for many years. I remember going to the church, and I told him, and we would sit around and say, did you see what Brother Jimmy preached this morning? And my pastor would look at me with anger and jealousy. And then there were people who were jealous of a man. Yeah, jealous of a man who, who didn't have a ninth, had up for a ninth grade education. Jealous of a man that God raised up. Let me tell you something. When God raised up somebody, God can kill us when you think about it. Come on, somebody. Come on. Amen. When God raised up William Seymour, he didn't care what the church thought. Come on, somebody. When God raised up Ron McFadden, he didn't care about what you thought. Come on, somebody. When God raised up Pastor Martin, he didn't care about what you thought. Come on, somebody. God is the one that raises up and brings down. Amen. 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 Are you guys getting anything out of this? Yes. Yeah. So God has used men such as Jimmy Swagger, David Wilkerson, Leonard Ravenhill. You heard of Leonard Ravenhill? Most of you don't have him. He's from England. Mighty man of God. Lester Summerall. You heard of Lester Summerall? Yes. He's a man that sit up under Smith Wigglesburg. God has used these men and Jesus Christ yes. to speak into my life. Yes. Did you hear that, church? Yes. To keep me from being deceived. Well, Pastor, what's the big deal? Because if I'm not deceived, you're not going to be deceived. Oh, yeah. Jim Jones was deceived and left nine when they received people to their death because they didn't read the word of God. They, came, they took what came out of a man's mouth. Yeah. Yeah. 
Everything that I preach, you better go home and check it out. Because your soul is at stake. A pastor once, I once sat on and he told his brother to this. I'll never forget it. He said, Pastor Ron marches to another drummer. Come on. No, I don't march to another drummer. I've seen everything from the real prophetic to the pathetic. And God, the Holy Spirit, isn't going to allow me to, you to pull anything on me. Did you get that? Amen. And with humility and with praise, you who sit here should be glad that there are two men that stand behind this pulpit that will not sugarcoat it, will not compromise it. Come on, somebody. Will not be swayed by popularity or negative opinion. Yeah. I told God somebody last Sunday, I said, man, I'm proud of you, man. Yeah. Woo, glory to God. I see a boldness that I've never seen before. Yes, I remember him telling me, man, you say things sometimes, I go like, oh, come on, yeah. I said, but now look at you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Preach the word. Preach the word. Rebuke and talk with all those stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Can I give you another word? Come on. Come on. In four square, my wife can tell you how the gifts of the Spirit move. I never went looking for a word. Now, some, some people just go looking for a word. Flying all over the country looking for a word. Yeah. You want a word? Open your Bible. Yeah. Yeah. From Genesis to Revelation. Yeah. Oh. And I'm not saying God doesn't give words, but you don't go run all over the country looking for it. Yeah. Pastor Ron, there's a guy in Florida. He's anointed of God. He's hitting people in the, in the stomach. Where is that in the Word? No. <laughs> Everything that we do should be in the Word of God. Amen. 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 Man, if you hit me in my stomach, you're going to get hit back. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. I didn't say, I, hey, I feel a flesh. Feel it now. Yeah. No. Lord God, hit me in my stomach if you want to. I'm talking about with God. I'm going to plug into the sin nature just for a minute. No. You know we got a sin nature, right? Yeah. They can come alive at any moment. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 People found all over the floor they wanted to see this man and found out that he was not of God. Yeah. He was phony. Did you hear that? Oh. Yes. But anyway, I was, we were in Foursquare and, 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 and this guy came to visit me. My wife and I was sitting about two rows back and he was giving people words and things like that. I'm just standing there. All of a sudden, he said, you. And I looked. He said, I'm talking to you. And I came forward. And he said, God has placed things upon your heart. If you try to water them down to please the people, he's going to make you look like a fool. Mm -hmm. Say it. And don't look at their faces. Amen. And I went home, and guess what? That's in the word of God. Oh, God told one of the prophets, you say what I place upon your heart. That's why when some of you guys get mad at me, I don't care. Because I'm going to stand before God, not stand before you. Come on, somebody. Amen. When I, when I, can I tell you how the devil works? I appreciate you all who come in now from 9 o'clock to 9.50 until the lights go on. Remember a couple Sundays ago, I kind of got on you guys by talking a little loud in here? I said, that's the time to come in. Not to visit, but to read your Bible, yeah. to study. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. To read your Bible. You can at least read your Bible on Sunday morning. Monday, because you know most of you don't read it all and all the week anyway. Oh. So Sunday morning, come in and act like you read your word. Come on, somebody. Pray for the pray that somebody get healed. Somebody get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes. That's the time to be meditating, not sitting, not visiting. Right. At 9.50 when Pastor flip the lights on, then go hug people. Go kiss them. Go tell them how much you love them. Amen? Amen. I, and so the devil said, last Sunday, the people are mad at you. They're angry at you. And they're not coming back. <laughs> oh. That's what he told me. Can I be real? Oh. And then I stood up there with like, I stood up there and said, you know what? If you're upset, oh well. That's what I said in my spirit, but in my flesh, I was scared. Come on, somebody. Go to the car. Amen. And then I also got mad at the praise team, Sister Connie, because one of the guys came in late. And I went home and I said to my wife, I'm done with the praise team. We're saying like we used to the CDs. And Stephen said, Ron, and that you the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on. Can I keep it real? I said, can I keep it real? God called me to preach. Amen. Amen. I don't even like people. Why he called me? <laughs> <laughs> the little 
Lord told me to stop saying that. Because <laughs> God loves people. Yes, yeah. If God loves people, I got to love people too. <laughs> Without the cross, you can't be saved. Amen. Without the cross, you can't be justified. Amen. Without the cross, you can't be sanctified. Amen. Without the cross, you can't be delivered. And sanctification is not a doctrine. Sanctification is the way that we're supposed to live. Yes. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't be led. Yes. Neither can you discern the heresies that are infiltrating the church today. Someone once told me that you point out or talk about the church as a whole. I would mostly be concerned about the church that I pastor. With due respect, can I say this? Even the most godly of us, whoever that might be, I don't know we miss it at times. That's why I'm so glad that I read the word of God. I respect other pastors. But guess what? I have to, I have to stand on what the word says. And when he told me this, the Holy Spirit brought to me the book of Revelation. Come on, somebody. Come out. That what God had against the pastors of Sardius and Laodicea and Ephesus and Pergamos and Thyatira. There's only two churches God had nothing against. Smyrna and Philadelphia. All when you see to the angels that mean the pastors that God had something against. If the Holy Spirit can point out the ills of the church, why can't the man or woman who is filled with the Holy Spirit called by God to preach the word, to reprove, to rebuke, to exalt all long suffering and suffering and doctrine, point out the heels of the church. Amen? Amen. 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 That's my job. Right. You don't know the time that I've asked God to forgive me. Because how many know God has not, even He has not called me to wound his sheep either. Amen. He has not called me to beat you. Come on, somebody. Come on. All there are times I do have to reprove and rebuke. Yeah. A brother once told me, told me a couple of Sundays ago, he said, he told his wife, I think Pastor Ron was talking about me. Oh. I just was preaching the word. But I thank God that he came back. Not like some of them who walked out the door and never came back because they got the toes stepped on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Sometimes when you throw a rock, whoever yells the loudest, loudest is the one that got hooked. Here, come on, somebody. Wow. I'm so glad that God has raised up the true Christians in this church. I'm so glad that Brother Leon didn't get mad at me when I said, Brother Leon, there are seats down front this morning. Amen? Amen. Because our usher is missing right now. And I love Brother Leon. I love you too. Amen. 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 Man, Brother Leon be so busy hugging people and 
kissing on people sometimes, and people be standing up all the way to the door. Brother Leon, we got some seats over here. I'm so glad he didn't get upset, amen? But some people get upset, and they'll get mature in the things of God. When you know it's not about you, and it's about God, you can't be deceived by the evil one. When you know it's not about you, but it's about the house of God. Amen? Amen. amen. If the pastor don't shake your hand, don't get upset. Maybe he'll do it next Sunday, and maybe he won't. Amen? If the pastor bypass you and don't see you and try to get to the altar, leave him alone. He's trying to hear from God. Come on, somebody. You know what? I can rebuke the best of them. However, the reproving and the rebuke, rebuking must be done with gentleness. We're not to hate the drug addict. Yeah. We're not to hate the drunk. Yeah. We're not to hate the thief, the lukewarm, the slowful, and the lazy. We're not to hate the homosexual. We're not to hate the government. Oh, let's stop right there for a minute. Oh. <laughs> I don't want no government. No. God ordained government. Yeah. Stupid. Yeah. If we didn't have government, we would have anarchy. Yes. Did you know that? Yes. What you're saying is that you don't like what God did. No, government is not perfect. And government will never be perfect. I don't care who you elect. But one day, government shall be perfect. The Paul, the Bible says that government shall be upon his shoulder. And that's the only time government will be perfect. But until then, to then, vote for those who stand for the word of God. Amen. Did you get that? Yes. Everybody want to put on green fatigues and go to the hills of Virginia. And I hate government. You don't hate your social security check when it comes. Uh, Mom, always keep quiet in here now. Also, right? You don't hate your income tax check when it comes. Come on. Medicare, come on, with a Medicare? Yeah. Medicare, you don't hate that? Right. Give it back. <laughs> it's getting quiet in here now. So I'm, oh my God. It's getting quiet in here now. We say some of the craziest stuff sometimes. Amen? Yeah. I hear good. Pray for your government. That's what's wrong with you ain't praying for. So, that's why they all messed up. We can whip and whine. About everything. When we put prayer instead of that murmuring and stuff, ooh, what would happen? Oh boy, let me move on. And I ain't no liberal. I'm a man of God. I remember when Pastor Barty was here. I preached one Sunday. I said, Republicans are going to hell too. Wow. He got quiet in his church. I thought I was in Arizona. The problem. Republican, I'm a Republican too. Now I'm in the pit. Yeah. I said, moving chairs are real close. It's going to be Republicans in hell too. Because you're not saved by whether you're Republican or Democrat or Independent. You're saved if you've been washed in the blood of the hell. Sometimes you have to repeat yourself. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry if you heard. I, this is repeated all the time. Yes. I've read this Bible over 50 times. Repeat, repeat, repeat <laughs> until they get inside my spirit. Yes. Yes. This is the Holy Spirit. Can I follow him? Yes. I just got to preach the truth. Okay. Now let's talk about modern, modern Harris's teaching. God has not called every priest to be a prophet. But he has called every preacher to be a watchman. Did yes. you get that? Yes. To warn and point out false doctrine, which many preachers choose to avoid because they're worried about the offering basket and they're worried about the seats. Right. I believe that God is going to meet faith like church in Aaron Burns' meet. Yes. Yes. If I have to go down to the Colorado River and throw a hook in the water, God will give us what we need. Yes. 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 I have two choices. I can tell you the truth, and you repent, and your soul be saved, yeah. or I can lie to you, 
and lose mine. Amen. Can I use a bad grammar? That ain't happening. Come on, somebody. Oh. I said, I'm going to tell you the truth if I can. Amen. I'd like to address, before I close, I'd like to address five different heresies of false teaching. Are you ready? Yes. Can we teach now? Yes. Modernism. Yes. Amen. That's number one. They don't believe that the Bible is the word of God. I believe that this Bible is the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. From yes. every John and every Tim. You out there with the New Bibles, the Message Bible, and the NIV Bible, throw them in the trash. They are nothing but junk. That quiet in your head, that's my own. Well, Pastor, these Bibles are easy to read. If you read the King James Bible, guess what? The Amplified, you keep studying it, God will open it up to you. Yes. Matter of fact, I gave, we've given most of your spot to a Bible. What do you do with them? There's a guy on Monday night, I'm sorry, on Wednesday night, hard-headed, stiff-necked, and stubborn. That's why he's not here anymore. He will come and open his NIV and read it on purpose. Uh, Amen. Jezebel. Jezebel spirit. Uh, yeah. uh, they don't believe that Jesus was and is the Son of God and that he arose from the dead. They don't believe in heaven or hell. And if they do believe, they don't believe in hell, but they believe in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about legalism. Legalism. They try to earn their salvation by doing good works or by doing certain things. They believe in God, however their faith is, is in Christ and his work on the cross, but rather in their good works. That's why most people don't like the message of the cross, because it doesn't talk about your work, it talks about the work that Jesus did. Yeah. Yeah. My work is as filthy rags. They believe they're saved by joining the church, being one of baptized. Taking communion and keeping certain bylaws and doing certain things. Legalism. Yeah. It'll kill you. Third, we have antinomianism. It's spelling A-N-T-I-N-O-M-I-A-N-I-S-M. It's of the hyper grace movement. That is what permeates the church today. Once you say the sinner's prayer, you don't have to ask for forgiveness again. Oh, oh, what? Oh, man, I had to ask God to forgive me this morning. Before I came to the church, because my wife asked me to sign something, and how many know I don't like writing? Come on, somebody. Yeah. I like reading. I'm t I write all the time. I write sermons. I write Bible studies. Now you want know me to write on the card? And I walked out. The, I walked out the door. I don't like writing. I love reading, because my writing is ugly. Bro, Leon got some beautiful hands, right? But mine, I don't like writing, but I have to write every, I have to write my sermons out. Did you know that? So the Holy Spirit got you. I have to write about it. And then I got to write a Bible study. And then now I got to fill out a car. And I jumped in my car and I felt like, hey, I told her, didn't I? Oh, before I get to the first street, guess what? Somebody say Holy Spirit. <laughs> I was trying to make all kinds of excuses. You know how you try to argue with God? But Lord, you know I'm always writing sermons and writing. <laughs> Call back. So I pulled into the flying J to give me some decaf coffee. <laughs> but before I stepped out of the car, I said, hey, babe, hello? I said, please forgive me. I was wrong. No, that wasn't a sin. It was wrong. It would have sent me to hell. But it wasn't being godly. Right. Right. Matter of fact, if I'd have got up here about asking my wife to forgive me, I might have forgot everything I was supposed to say. I can feel his presence right now. I can feel his anointing. I don't know whether you can or not, but I can sense him in his place. Right. Maybe she might, maybe God wanted to get told her to speak out that she needed it to it. Maybe we wouldn't have got through the song service. What I'm saying, church, that everything that we do, yeah. what, if it's wrong, it'll breathe the Spirit of God. Yes. Yes. I don't know about you, but I want God's best. Yes. So therefore, let me tell you something. Until the trump sound, we're going to come short. Right. Did you get that? Yes. The Bible does not preach sin is perfection. That's right. We come short every day. Did you get that? Yes. Yeah. We don't go out our way to sin. I'm not saying sin, but what I'm saying, when you do blow it, when you do kick the dog, when you do yell at your kid, come on somebody, 
and the Holy Spirit breathe you, it's time to say, Lord, forgive me. But this hyper grace movement that's going around in the church today, you don't ever have to ask God to forgive you again. Yeah. That is a lie from the pits of hell. Yes. Amen. 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 How about how many? Let me ask you a question. How many have you? How many have, you, have gossiped since you come to know the Lord? Oh. <laughs> how many have back bent since you come to know the Lord? Oh. Yes. Amen. Is that sin? Yes. Yes. How many have you? How many have you? How many have murdered? Since you came to the Lord. Yes, How about wine? Yes. How do you know that's wrong? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Lord, forgive me. <laughs> that's the hyper grace movement. I can call names, but I'm not. <laughs> not today. Then they say you shouldn't speak of sin. Because when you mention sin, it makes you sin conscience. Let me tell you something. You had better speak of sin. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Yes. Because my Bible says no sin should enter that eternal city. Right. Right. Amen. Right. Come on, church. Come on. Most of the modern church, they don't hear nothing about sin. We love to hear about how great we are. And we are, the, and we are God's meow. Come on, somebody. Oh. Amen. We do. But when a man or woman of God began to stand behind a pulpit and the Holy Spirit began to show things that are still in your heart and in your life, we don't like that. No. Pastor, I just want to know how good I am. Let me tell you how good you are. You're not good. There's none good but one, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Predestination. Have you heard? That's another one. That God has chosen certain people, some to go to heaven, and some to go to hell. Yes. Have you heard that before? Yes. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God, what God has predestined, everybody who accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior and repent of his or her sin and live a holy life will go to hell. Yes. The word of God says God so loved the world, not that God so loved some. Right. See, that's why we got another word. Uh-oh. But then there's some who act like only Americans are going to heaven. Our certain cultures are going to heaven. Tell Damon Duke, the Ku Klux Klan sympathizer. Tell Farrakhan, the black Muslim, come on, leader. Tell the head of a Raza, whoever that is, come on somebody. Can I tell you what John the Revelator said? Oh, glory to God. Let me, let, me, let me say it again. I say, tell David Duke, who think he's superior to others. Tell Farrakhan, who think he's superior to others. Tell the, the, the leader of Moraza, meaning the race. Tell them that John the Revelator wrote this in Revelation 5 9, and they sung a new song, saying, You are worthy to open the book and to open the seals thereof, for you were slain. And have redeemed us to God by your blood. Who? Jesus. Out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, he said, I saw them stand before the Lamb of God. Out of one blood. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Out of one blood, all the nations of the earth were created. Too, my <laughs> <laughs> I want love. Amen. 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 Then all of a sudden my eyes begin to open up a little bit and some of the anger begin to leave. And get there, what, guess what I said, Ray? This is what really knocked my socks off. <laughs> he said, out of Ethiopia, uh, I will call my people. Amen. Remember when Israel sent that those planes to, uh, to Africa and brought back those Ethiopian Jews? You know what that told me, Sandra? God is no respect to the person. So guess what? I don't care what goes on in this world. I don't care what happens in America. Come on, somebody. I know that my God loves me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. I have two daughters right now. My, sister, my, my wife, Ella, and I'm saying, Lord, give me the right words to sing them. They're black Muslims. They've been black Muslims for years. They're lost. They're angry. They're bitter. Know why? Why do you think we have so many black Muslims in prison? Because they don't read the word of God. But when you read the word of God and you see that God loves, Jesus loves me, yes I know, but the Bible tells me so. Come on somebody. How many know that deception is rolled away? We got one more. We got two more. You guys tired? No. 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 Humanistic psychology. It has all the answers they say to the perversion and ills of mankind. Let me say something this morning. Only the Bible has the ills, the answer to the ills of man, which can be found in the cross and the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. Humanistic psychology was created by Freud and Maslow. They didn't even believe in God. So why do I want to listen to somebody who didn't believe in God? What can they tell me? When I was taking a college class, I told you the story. They said, you have to have psychology. I said, I don't want no psychology class. You have to have it. Guess what I did? Walked out of it. Especially when I found out the person who was teaching was a witch. And the guy, he's a pastor now. And he said, she's just a white witch. Man, a witch is a witch. Come on, somebody. I don't care if she's a white witch or a black witch. Come on, somebody. A witch is a witch. Am I right? And I got up out of it. Amen. Amen. Because I'm glad I did. Because I'd, I'd have been I'd, I'd been preaching psychology to you today. What is psychology? Self-esteem. Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must deny himself. Right. Amen. 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 How many know the church world is not doing that? It's all about self. We love that. Self. We can do it. You can do it. Am I right? right. Yes. Yeah. David didn't say that. David didn't say, I come against you. Come on. No. He said, I did, but I come against you in the name of a Lord. But see, the church wanted to say, I come against you, and they leave out the Lord. But yeah, I'm coming against you, Satan, but I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord. Come on, Of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Can I say one thing? We love the 
The goosebumps? Yes. But what about the conviction of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Oh. You know what I found out though? Some people in church who yell the loudest when they get, they, when they get I mean they're getting hit. Right. When they go, woo! Preachers for a little while. No. You know, Pastor Prodigy got seniority on me. I've only been doing it eight years. He's been doing it for 20. But in my eight years, I have learned that the one that yells the loudest is the one that got hit. <laughs> you think they'd be encouraging you? No, they just got hit. Woo! They got hit over there. Close to my mouth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say one more. One more. One more. The Jesus died spiritually, doctor. Now, if I name some of the stars, some of you will get mad. Yeah. Lord, should I? Mom, yeah. Yeah. Yes. We bring it. Name it. Truth is truth. Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. George Powers. Yes. Bill Winston. Yes. Fred Price. Word of faith. They put faith in faith, but not faith in Jesus Christ. You can put faith in faith and make that faith out of an idol. Did you know that? Yes, we all have faith, and that's why some do not. Um, some, I listen to you. The thing is, are they lifting up Jesus? Yeah. Are they lifting up Jesus? If the survey is mostly about you, they're not lifting up Jesus. They have to lift up Jesus. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Did you hear me? Yeah. Lift up Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you what else they believe. They, 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 they minimize the message of the cross. How? They said that the cross is past miseries. We should talk about the cross anymore. Because that was the past. They say it's the greatest defeat in human history. They teach when Jesus was on the cross, he became a sinner. No, he, he became a sin offering. Yes. They say that he went down into hell and he suffered. Do you hear me? He suffered. And finally, after three days, when God got tired of it, Jesus threw the demons off of him and he was born again. That's blasphemy. That's great blasphemy. They say that they are resurrection people. Because Jesus was resurrected. So that's why I mentioned the cross. Can I tell you what the Apostle Paul would say to these people? I said, can I tell you what the Apostle Paul would say to these people? He says in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness. But to us, unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. The preaching of the cross is to those who perish foolishness. So what is God saying? God is saying if you memorize Minimize what my son has done for you. You're going to lose your soul. Because nothing else can't save you. But what Jesus did at the cross. Nothing else. Brother Tom told me, I didn't mean to call him Brother Tom. He came out of a church that the pastor got mad every time he preached the blood. Every time he said something about the cross. He never let him. He never let him. He never let him pray again. Can I say one thing? I love all these pastors in this valley. I pray for each and every one of them. But I'm not going to stand before them. I'm going to stand before God. And I'm not concerned about popularity contests. I'm concerned about pleasing, G pleasing God by preaching what he's told us to preach. Yeah. 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 It's not unity at any cost. No. It's not unity at any cost. No. Lastly, be not deceived. 
I don't envy any pastor with a large following. I don't envy, I don't, I don't envy, I don't envy any man or woman of God. That's one thing I don't wrestle with, envy, jealousy. Some of you do, I don't. 